Felting a Headband with Elisa Bordeaux. Hi, my name is Elisa Bordeaux. I am a felt textile artist. I live in Mannheim, South Germany. Every year I produce hundreds of felted items, shawls, wraps and hats. Besides these beautiful and expensive items, I have a certain number of smaller items in my assortment. Felted brooches, headbands and mittens are very important. Felt headbands are always present at my stands at German art markets. They have a pleasant price, interesting design, they are very practical and attractive for customers. I will share with you the secrets of this model, construction of custom template, how to get the perfect edge, choice of materials, harmonious arrangement of elements. Such an accessory is good for a gift and very practical for mild winter or early spring. Headbands are an ideal solution for experimenting. You may try different materials and different designs without investing time and efforts. We will need 10 to 15 grams of merino wool in tops, 18 to 19 micron, 20 to 30 grams of viscose fibers can be replaced with tusser silk and some decker. I use viscose, tusser silk fibers, other fibers, bamboo, rami, wool locks, silk scraps, naps, pretty much anything you have. I like using sequins, lace and capure in a very small quantities as I catch her. It is very important that the fleece or locks be fine fleece, a single rough lock can ruin the work, as the forehead is very sensitive. We need a laminate underlay from a construction market for the multi-use template. Then, we need permanent markers for drawing the template on the laminate underlay. I prefer to use silver or golden markers. Then you will need the simplest sewing equipment, centimeter tape to take measurements, scissors, thread and needle, some pins. We will cut a plastic and we will cut fabric so that is better to have two different pairs of scissors. Then, bubble wrap to cover the table, bubbles up. I lay old bedsheets under the bubble wrap and fix them with pins. You will need an extra piece of bubble wrap, I use it for sanding like it is shown here. You will need a container to dissolve soap. I prefer olive soap, it is my favorite. I don't like strong dishwasher detergents. Then, you will need a ball browse or a plastic bottle for soapy water and a sprayer for tap water. Then, old towels, I use a lot of them to remove excess water and to dry my hands. And here's my favorite car sponge, they are perfectly good to remove excess water. Then, synthetic netting, I always use it to wet the layout. And, my favorite electric sander. In the handout you can find some links about using the electric sander. In principle, you can make this model also without a sander but it would require more time and efforts. If you intend to produce headbands for sale, you need a size range. This applies to the length, head circumference, and width of the headband, forehead height. The headband is a bit elastic, but it's not a one-size item. Therefore, you will need to make several patterns. Look at the photo, all the headbands are different in size. A diagram of the pattern used in the video. You may start with my template, see the scheme. Let us make a custom template. You will only need two measurements, the half circumference of your head and the height of your forehead to the hairline. We need to increase these measurements by the shrinkage factor. For this model the shrinkage factor should be at least 1, 5. Today I will work with the shrinkage factor 1.5, but your factor can be bigger, up to 2.0. Shortly, what is shrinkage factor? It is the linear size of the template, or the layout before felting, divided by the linear size of the same element after felting. 
Shrinkage 1.5 means that the felt loses one-third or 33% of its size. If you had a rectangle 30 by 30 centimeters, after felting it will be 20 by 20 centimeters. However, it is better to measure the shrinkage using your real item and not a rectangle. I recommend you to start with my template, my layout, and my felting technique, and then possibly adjust your template if you prefer bigger shrinkage. We build a rectangle with a base equal to the half circumference of the head multiplied by Q, I get 44 centimeters. The height of the rectangle should be 35 to 40 centimeters. Divide the rectangle in half and measure half the forehead height multiplied by CG from the center line. My size is 7.5 centimeters. Now draw the top and bottom line like this. The front part is almost done. Now draw the back part, it should not be less than 5 cm in width. Now I make for notches, they are needed to ensure that the felt is fixed to the template during the felting process. Let us draw the pattern on the laminate underlay. I draw a half and then mirror it. I cut the template, leaving the margins above and below the main shape. I make for notches, they will help to fix the felt on a template. The template is ready. Let's start laying fibers out. The headband has three layers, a lining made of viscose fibers, you can replace it with tusser silk, but viscose is the best. The second layer is a layer of wool, followed by a layer of viscose and decker. Let's start laying out. The layer of viscose should be even and thick enough. It should be thicker on the front area. The forehead is a very sensitive area and it is important to that it is not in contact with the wool. I make a small overhang over the side edge of the template. Sprinkle with water, soak well with soapy water, flip the template over. Lay out the viscose on the back, flip the overhang on the template. The viscose layer is ready. In the process constantly adjust the open edge. I am starting with the wool. Split the wool top lengthwise like this. Take a length of thin wool band equal to the circumference of our template. Stretch this wool band along the edge like I show you. This way we create tension, which then will tighten the edge. Start the herringbone layout. First row. See, here is a blunt end of the wool tuft and here is the diffuse end. I am coiling these ends like this and continue using these names. As always, we put the wool tufts with their blunt ends to the open edge, about 45 degrees to the edge. The second row of herringbone. The diffuse ends of the tufts meet the diffuse ends of the previous row. Overlap is more than 50%, so there are no holes or gaps. We reach the edge of the pattern with the layout. The next row is a classic herringbone, blunt ends meet diffuse ends. And the final row of herringbone layout. On the sides of the template we have almost 100% overlap, and on the frontal zone the overlap will be less. We add a thin strip of wool along the edge. It is not stretched, its purpose, to smooth the scalloped edge of the herringbone layout and provide an even edge.
sails on fire and watch my vessel sink. Cause I've seen the shores of every tide, but I still wish I was in your sea. First we lay out the outer layer of viscose on both sides, then we lay out the decor according to the chosen scheme. I have finished laying out the wool and start with the decor. Let us talk about the principles of decorating. Let me show you a couple of my design schemes. I will show you three schemes. Look, I start with elongated elements, usually something shiny, like fabric with sequins. I add more elongated elements, like pieces of silk, and then more locks. Another scheme I call cabochons, here the decorative elements are rounded.
In the third scheme I use fabrics like viscose and silk and even sometimes some synthetic fabric. I lay them out in strips and add some decorative fibers on top. After felting the image is amazingly harmonious. I start felting. I spray my work with water, cover with the synthetic netting, and then sprinkle well with soapy water using a spray bottle. Then, I press well with the car sponge. Then I remove synthetic netting and start sanding with the electric sander.
Now I can work on the edge, forming it by hand. Let's begin the fulling process. I squeeze out the excess water and start felting with delicate kneading movements. I am kneading my felt like I am kneading dough. I do not like to work with cold felt, here again there is a similarity with the dough. During the fulling process, I heat my felt 3 to 4 times in the microwave. You knead from 30 seconds to a few minutes, each microwave has its own character. This one here is a very old microwave oven, it doesn't heat very well and so it takes me longer. I start out gently, and then the felting become more aggressive. I toss, lift and throw, like I do it with dough. I measure the headband and continue felting, bringing it to the size I want. Look at the technique for shortening the length of the headband. When the headband is almost the right size, thoroughly rinse it out and dry it. Watch my vessel sink Cause I 
I've seen the shores of every tide, but I still wish I was in your sea. Look how beautiful it is 